Hey, thanks for dropping by to the Planners on Purpose podcast, created by Naomi Tucker, CMP. Now, this space is for the event planners to encourage and empower you so that you can fully live your life on purpose. So before we dig in, please take a moment to subscribe so you get future shows. Now, here she comes, your host, Naomi. Hello, everyone. It's Naomi Tucker. So happy to be here for this month of May. I'm just ecstatic that it's May already, and we are already cruising into the middle of the month. How did that happen? I feel like we're still getting over the snow that we had last week here in Wisconsin, but we're getting there. We're elevating ourselves, and we're now at lots of rain. So at some point, we will see the sun. I absolutely know we will. Regardless, I know we'll get there. We will always get to the point where we see that sunshine coming in, and I'm here for it when it does happen. But for those of you that do not know me, I am Naomi Tucker. Again, I am an event professional turned high performance coach. I help you build effective and time saving techniques and leadership strategies so that you can love the life that you are leading. I empower you to be a planner on purpose. Now to live on purpose means to intentionally develop self mastery, to be confident in the vision and goals you have set for your life and to be a force in moving forward to keep it. That is a planner on purpose. So I just want to welcome you. I'm so happy that you're here with me today. And I wanted to talk to you about five essential skills that every event planner needs right now. Now, this five skills aren't necessarily going to be the be all end all, because as you know, event planners, we have lots of skills up our sleeves. We do a lot and we cannot narrow it down to just a simple five. However, I did want to share with you these five because I do feel like they are very important. And especially if you're coming into the event planning space, it is really important to learn about some of the skills that are needed as you're stepping into something new. And for some of you all that are veterans, you've been in the event planning space for quite a while. Maybe these will come to you as a refresher. Maybe you can share these with someone that you know that is a little new to the industry. And, you know, maybe you can add on to the list because you are that rock star that you are. You can send me an email, let me know, hey, here's some other skills, Naomi, that event planners must have. But either way, I'm glad to have you with me. And I'm excited to share with you these five skills Now, if you ask anyone off the street, what would it take to be an event planner? They would just think it's just super simple and easy, right? They would just think, oh my gosh, this is like planning a party. And all of the people that have been in the event planning space for long enough, when they hear party planner, they do a little eye roll, right? (laughs) You're just rolling your eyes because you're saying, hmm, they really don't know. (laughs) Little do they know being a successful event planner takes much more than a skill that most people would normally think of. Event planners, they need to really blend their inspiration for planning dynamic and transformational events with the knowledge of numbers and risk management. And they need to do all that while ensuring the ultimate satisfaction of their events. So these are some skills that I'm thinking blending the right way makes for an amazing, amazing event planner. Now, my first one that I have is some of these may seem a little simple, but they are oh so good. The first one is customer service. Now, customer service is is an essential skill. It is servicing your customer, no matter what customer you have. It can be your budget owner, it can be your event owner, it can be a client that you have, it can even be a person that is a part of your event that is coming up to you asking you where the restroom facilities are. You have to respond in a way of servicing that customer. And an event planner, the skill in which they lead with customer services, they do that in a way which makes it easy, makes it pleasant, And in a way that that person will come back again and again, because they feel as though you are so good to work with. 
It's so easy to have a conversation with you. You are very welcoming. So that is a very important skill to have. And from a simple conversation on the phone, perhaps to helping a guest find their wedding ring that they lost while they were at dinner during an event you plan, you still have to have that same type of customer service. And being effective at it is key. And sometimes it, well, many times it does take lots of different practice, but it is definitely a skill that you want to practice often. So I would just say that if you find yourself that you feel like I need a little bit more customer service in order to see, to get better, then definitely put yourself in positions where you can exercise that skill. Now, to level up on this customer service, I also would love to put hospitality in there because there's one thing in servicing a customer and making it easy and pleasant. That's amazing. But adding that layer of hospitality on top, going over and above where people know they can't get that same experience anywhere else, they have to come to you, uh, that you remember certain things that makes it super, super, their experience just over the top amazing. You remember birthdays and holidays and you, your, your client's kids' names and you use that information in order to elevate their experience. Have you ever walked into a hotel room and someone has a really nice gift for you? Perhaps it's just an amenity, but not only is it an amenity with your basic things, right? You can tell that there is extra attention paid to that amenity because it's the certain water that you drink or it's the certain bottle of wine that you really like. Oh, they, they knew that you like mixed nuts that are unsalted rather than salted. So these are some of the things that help your interaction with your clients. And it is you having that additional hospitality on top of that customer service. So I would say hospitality is definitely a big skill as an event planner that you would need to have. And recently, I think it was a couple months ago, our book club also read a book called Unreasonable Hospitality. It was by Will Guidara, and he was a general manager over 11 Madison Park in New York City. And it was so exciting to just read all of the different ideas that they came up with and how they entertained guests, how they really delighted and surprised everyone with this hospitality um, from memorizing their the guest names as they walk into the restaurant and being able to form some personable connection with them throughout their experience while eating there that the guests just never forgot that that made them come there over and over again. So these are just mere examples of how you can interlace hospitality on top of everything that you do. Now, the third one I have is creativity problem solving. So every event planner should have creativity and problem solving as an essential skill. Now, these can be it's separate or they can be put together. I think I took some liberties here with putting, lumping a couple of these skills together only because I know that it, it works well together. But really creativity, we have to be creative to come up with different experiences for our guests. Uh, if our guest is wanting a classy West Indian reception, um, we need to know how do we do that? We, do we know, do we have the resources? Do we have the vendors? Do we have team that we need in order to come up with the right vision for this event. Being able to kind of tap into our creativity and output something, what our clients are looking for, is an essential skill to have. Now, also the same as we would need to have that creativity, we need to have it when it comes to solving certain problems. Because many times there are different problems that come up as we are planning events. Um, maybe this, maybe the stage that we essentially wanted for a particular event no longer can be the size you wanted it. And now it has to be smaller. But all of the entertainment that you had planned needed that size stage. So, well, how are you going to do it differently, but then also give the client what they want and what they're expecting? 
that is going to involve some type of creativity. So it's essential for event planners to have creativity, to be open enough to tap into that creativity in order to have really great experiences for their clients. So I can't speak enough about creativity and it's just, it's just, it can be big problems like that, or it can be coming up with a signature cocktail at your event. Creativity really is interlaced with everything that we do as event professionals, and we definitely need to be able to tap into it. We are creative beings, so being able to tap into our creativity often is just the best part of our job, and it's an amazing skill set that we are born with that we get to flex when we're doing event planning. So that is one of the most essential skills that every event planner needs to be able to develop and lean on. Now I'm going to go a little basic with the next couple of the skills. So the next one I have is an Excel and spreadsheet. Knowing how to operate Excels and and spreadsheets and um, reading a spreadsheet, manipulating a spreadsheet, that is super important because I can't can't tell you out of all the events that I plan, there's going to be an Excel spreadsheet somewhere in it. <laughs> so if you are an event planner, event coordinator, and you're listening to me and you do not have that particular skill, it is a skill set that eventually you're going to have to run, you're going to run into somebody's spreadsheet. I definitely feel like if you even can take a course or some type of a training on Excel, training on Google Sheets, that's going to really be very beneficial to you in the long run. Now, I have seen spreadsheets for arrival departure reports, for attendance reports, for any registration reports, activity reports, and even budgets. There's so much that um, that is needed when it comes to Excel. There's so much, or spreadsheets, so much manipulation that you can do in order to make the reports work for you. Um, even data and analytics and surveys, all of those are typically downloaded or even uploaded through some type of spreadsheet. Many of you that are event planners that are probably veterans, you you might be like, why? Why is she saying this? Because that is just a given. But um, I've also trained people, countless people, that did not have this as a skill. And it did put them a little bit behind until they could figure it out. And thankfully, learning like any kind of spreadsheet um, platform is, it could be fairly easy um, on the basic level. So, but you'll be amazed at how many people just don't know. So if you're new listening to this, I would just say, hey, no shame. Go ahead and find a way to get some training on it and dip into that skill and work on it ahead of time because at some point in your event planning career, you are going to need to learn how to operate any kind of spreadsheet. Now, the last report that I said was budget reports and accounting and budgeting is also an essential skill. Learning how to be able to take the expenses that you're going to have for a program, the income that you're going to have to the program and having some type of a income statement or budget statement in order to say, here's bottom line, what we're making, here's what we're losing on this event, here's if we're breaking even. Having some type of accounting is very important as well. So learning how to read a budget report, how to form a budget report is going to be a wonderful skill that is going to set you ahead of the pack. Now, many times when we come into different organizations, different organizations have their different templated reports that they use. It really is important for you to also learn how to build those things on your own as well. So making sure that, um, that you take the time to see if you could do it on your own versus always relying on um, organizations tools. It's great that they have the tools, but sometimes we need to be able to build things from scratch as well and 
keep doing that here and there just to make sure that you know that you still got it. All right, so the last one that I have here, the last essential skill is influence. There is a skill to being influential and it is a soft skill, um, but it is oh so amazing if you learn it and you can um, flex the muscle of influence. You need influence in order to help your clients, help leadership, help your event sponsors see an event how you see it, see a solution to the problem how you see it, um, explain things in a way that will help them make the best decision for their event. That's what influence does. And that is pretty powerful. So really how you build this skill is just continuing to work with clients, putting yourself out there, presenting solutions. This is the only way that that gets better. It's over time and it's over countless interactions and it's over continuing to just plan and be with your clients all the time. So making sure that you really be attuned or be aware of the influence that you have or the opportunities that you have for influencing is going to be really key for you as an event professional. Now, I'm not saying go and have your clients do something that they don't want to do. However, you use influence in a way to help them meet their goals in order to help them see a solution that's going to be the best solution for them. Using influence in a way that's different or more toxic obviously is not going to get too far. (laughs) So using your influence in a way that's going to uplift an event help your clients is going to be super essential and they need you to be influential. They need to hear things in a particular way from you so that they can see what you see and they can go on and tell their leadership and be confident in the fact that you have it and they don't have to worry. Those are the five. I hope that that was something that you found that was beneficial. I just felt like, hey, these five skills are something that we definitely need to have. And there are more. But if I were to pick five right now, those are five skills that you would need to have if you're going to step into event planning. And if you're currently an event planner, maybe these five skills are something that you might want to brush up on and understand where you are in your process of understanding these skills or building up your skills. Maybe there you found at least one thing that you can sharpen, sharpen your skill on. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Planners on Purpose podcast. We will see you on the next episode. Until next time, stay on purpose. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. If you enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button and tell us how much you enjoyed the show by leaving a message in the comments. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.